Hello, and welcome back to the studio. I'm Dr. Wigo, and today we're going to be talking about this guy again. Yes, our old friend Vision Pro, just like last week. Only this time we're going to be talking about the software, Vision Pro OS 2.0, which was announced this week. In last week's video, I talked about how Apple releasing new content and the What If app and all that stuff is like giving me new hope. Well, let me tell you, I have even more hope now after seeing the announcement of Vision OS 2.0. Isn't it a little early for a 2.0? Yeah, well, that's a whole other issue that I'll talk about at the end. So what we're going to talk about now is at first, I'm just going to kind of run through the stuff they talked about the keynote. So if you skip to the next chapter, I'll be talking about the keynote. And if you watch the keynote, then you can skip to the chapter after that where I'll talk about the new stuff, not in the keynote, but that was announced there or that developers discovered when they started playing with it. I am not a developer, so I don't have a copy. There are other videos on YouTube where you can go see people playing with some of these new features. By the way, most of them don't work yet, but it was just announced. It's, it's coming soon. So we'll talk about what they talked about at the keynote. Then in the next chapter, I'll talk about the things they didn't talk about at the keynote, but were, were present and are going to be present in Vision OS 2.0. And then at the end, I'll talk about, well, what does that all mean? So at the keynote, Apple talked about Vision OS first before all the other operating systems. Again, they're really pushing this thing. Well, and they're also going to, as I'll tell you at the end, they're also going to be releasing it in other countries very shortly. So I think part of this was like an ad for that. They ran through a bunch of existing apps for the Vision Pro, like the NBA app that lets you look at multiple games at the same times and have stats. And it, it's quite an amazing thing. Then they talked about uh, Unextinct, an app that lets you explore endangered species around the planet. Then they ran through a bunch of games, Black Box, Thrasher, Runaways. Oh, and Game Room. So now with SharePlay, you can play with other people with Vision Pros, like chess and the other board games and that thing. And then they ran through a bunch of other apps, like my personal favorite, the Kung Fu Panda School of Chi. I'm sure the School of Chi came from School of Rock because Jack Black, anyway an SAP analytics cloud and my Mako, which is a surgical simulation for like replacing hips done by Stryker, who's a big artificial hip make maker here in the Memphis area. Then they started talking about what's coming in Vision OS 2.0. And the best thing for me was one of the first things they showed, which were the new gestures because one of the worst things about Vision Pro is having to get up here and tap this guy, the digital crown for the home view to open so you can get to your apps. Well, now you hold out your hand and tap and there they are and tap and they go away. But better, you can then flip over your hand and it will change to a little display which shows you the current time and how much battery you have left. And then if you tap with your hand down, it opens the control center. So you don't have to do the looking up thing. I've never gotten the hang of that. I'm always turning my head. Well, it's not your head. It's your eyes that have to look up, not your head. Everybody blows that. It's not just me. Now I'll never have to do that again because I can just boop and get into the control panel. Now the Photos app is one of the ones where they've made a lot of changes. The main change being the convert to spatial, which I think is also going to work on iPad and iPhone, but you can go into your library of photos you took years ago and it will convert them into spatial video. And the people who've tried it say it's actually pretty good. This is like those 3D conversions. You know, when 3D was a big thing in the movies, yeah, you probably don't remember. It was years ago. James Cameron shot Avatar in with 3D cameras. And then pretty much after that, everybody just used dig digital conversions. Well, this is Apple's digital conversion 
of your 2D photos into 3D. And it works pretty well. And again, the share play thing, which they're pushing real hard in the Vision Pro, I guess because they feel guilty because everybody says it's so isolating. So basically you can share play in the Photos app and show people photos and, and spatial photos, which they will see spatially because they'll be in a Vision Pro too. Then they showed off, I think, what a lot of people, especially the productivity users, are just salivating for. The Mac Virtual Display was a cool concept, but it was limited. And there's been some third-party apps that have tried to let you add multiple screens. Well, Apple's come up with their solution, and what they've done is they've added a wide and an ultra-wide where the screen will basically wrap around you and they say it's the equivalent of two 4K monitors. So you basically have a, a curved 4K monitor here and a fur, but all presented as one monitor. And, and this is the key, they will be using foveated rendering, which, which is probably one of the reasons on the original Mac virtual display, it was constrained because they weren't foveating rendering, they were rendering the whole thing. Well, now they're gonna do foveated rendering, but on the Mac, by the way, I have a Mac here. That's why I keep pointing down there. So the Mac will do the foveated rendering. So as you look around the screen, the part over here won't be as well rendered because you're not looking at it. And when you turn around and look, it'll render over here and let that blur out. Kind of cool. Then they announced that travel mode will now work on trains. Trains? It worked on airplanes, but it didn't work on trains. And apparently some people also had trouble with it in cars, not the drivers, they weren't driving. The new travel mode will be much better in cars and on trains and still work on planes. Then because it was WWDC, Worldwide Developer Conference, they talked about some new APIs. They have a new volumetric API for 3D apps so that they can play well together so you can have multiple 3D apps open and they won't get in each other's way if they're using the APIs. The tabletop API used for mapping to flat surfaces like for that game room app that puts things on the table in front of you. And there's other apps that do that too. And then the enterprise APIs, which are the really complicated ones, because these are for specialized apps like healthcare and manufacturing and those kind of things. So these three new APIs are going to make developing for the Vision Pro much easier, which then will get more apps, which will then hopefully get more people to buy it, which is which is Apple's goal. And then for spatial video, they announced that Canon, of all people, has a new APS-C lens for the R7, which will shoot spatial video. And you can edit it in Final Cut Pro and then share it with the new Vimeo app for the Apple Vision Pro. YouTube kind of missed the boat here and there's more of this to come. For immersive video, they announced a partnership with Blackmagic Design with a new high-end camera, which will shoot immersive video. Very expensive, by the way. This isn't for you and me. Which you can then edit in DaVinci Resolve Studio, not the free version. They also ran through a bunch of new coming immersive shows, additional episodes for the ones that I talked about last week. Plus they have one coming for extreme sports they're doing with Red Bull. They talked about some music stuff and they specifically mentioned the weekend and only the weekend, but we already have the Alicia Keys immersive video. And so we already have some of these concerts for one kind of thing. And they announced a, a short film called Submerged, which was shot in immersion. And then new immersive shows, in addition to the ones we already had, there's one called Elevated, one called Wildlife, and one called Boundless. That was what was in the keynote. But Wes Davis of The Verge ran an article, which I will link down below, where he ran through a bunch of things they didn't cover in the keynote, but that were announced, kinda. It was, well, there was that one slide at the end they always do where they have all the little boxes. Well, there were a bunch of things on those boxes that they had not talked about. And so Wes ran through those and then I've dug through and I found a few more. The one that a lot of people are impressed with is the keyboard breakthrough, which means when you're in the environment where you're completely immersed, you can only see your hands. But now if you have a magic keyboard, 
it will break through. And so when you reach over to type, the keyboard will appear. And so you can see what you're typing. Some of us don't touch type, so we need that. I'll also need a magic keyboard because I don't have one. And then another big change, any Bluetooth mouse will now be able to be paired with the Vision Pro. So you don't have to have, you know, the magic mouse, which everybody seems to hate anyway. You can use any Bluetooth mouse. Oh, and God bless them. You'll finally be able to rearrange the home view icons. Like you've always been able to do on an iPhone. Of course, the iPhone is getting even better rearranging of the, of the icons, but yeah, I, that'll come to Vision Pro maybe someday. Actually, it might not because in Vision Pro, they're not there all the time. They just pop up when you need them. So if they're all in a cluster, it's not really a big deal. Here's a big one for the married couples. Now, when you go into guest mode, it will remember the most recent guest for up to 30 days. So if you'd like to share with your wife or with a friend, now it will remember them. So when they put the headset back on, it will recognize their eye and flip over so they don't have to go through the whole setup process every single time. Now, it's only one. What everyone asked for was multiple profiles. Well, not yet, but maybe in 3.0. Remember the NBA app I showed you earlier with the multiple screens where you could watch multiple games at the same time and all that? Well, they're bringing that to Apple TV Plus app for five screen multi view, the same thing you could do in the NBA app. Well, now you'll be able to do it in the Apple TV Plus, which means for any sports that Apple TV Plus has, which I think is Major League Baseball and a couple other, you'll be able to have multiple, you'll be able to watch five baseball games at the same time, or maybe five angles of the same game at the same time. Oh, and AirPlay, we've always been able to AirPlay from the Vision Pro out. Well, now you'll be able to AirPlay in from an iPhone, an iPad, or a Mac. So you'll be able to AirPlay things in here. That So maybe if you have something that you can't get into the Vision Pro, well, you can AirPlay it over and watch it from your iPad. They also announced that when you're in Safari and you're like watching a video on a web page, you can now, when you go to full screen view, it will just pop out the video and get rid of everything else. So you'll basically have a floating video screen that you can resize so you have a free floating video player. So again, Netflix and YouTube kind of missed their window. If they were going to get in, they should have gotten in now because now you can just use Safari, go to Netflix, pop out, you got the window. Now this was on the slide, but Wes didn't talk about it. And I don't know anything about it, but there was a little health kit icon on the Vision Pro. So apparently health kits coming to the Vision Pro. Now the Vision Pro can already monitor your breathing and some other things. In fact, the mindfulness app where you where the thing dang and they try to get you to breathe and be mindful. Now it has a setting synced breathing so that as you breathe, the thing going getting bigger and smaller will be synced to your breathing. That sounds pretty cool. They've also added one more environment. You know, there was a bunch that said coming soon. Well, they weren't coming soon, <laughs> but one came, but just one, Bora Bora. Oh, they've added the ability for Siri to read and speak web pages. So you can have a web page open and then Siri can be reading it to you while you work on other things. In, in conjunction with that, system-wide live captions. So if you're, if you're hard of hearing, well, there'll be captions, live captions everywhere in the system that you'll be able to turn off and on. That's quite a bit. Does it merit the 2.0 release number? I don't think so. This is really like a 1.5 kind of release, but they're trying to gen up support, get people interested, especially since it's coming to eight more countries shortly which is good news for some of my subscribers. Uh, China, Japan, and Singapore will be getting Vision Pro June 28th. And Australia, Canada, France, Germany, and the United Kingdom, and I know I have a couple of subscribers there, July 12th. They did not say whether it will be coming with 2.0. I don't know if 2.0 will be finished now. 
The developers got betas of it at WWDC. And like I said, you can go around YouTube and find people shooting videos and trying some of these things. And you'll discover that a lot of these things they announce don't work real well or at all. They haven't gotten to the wide and ultra wide on the Mac connected display, for example. That's not there yet. But it's coming. So even if it still ships with like 1.2 in these eight countries, 2.0 will not be far behind. Although it's really not 2.0. You know what I mean. So I think this is great news. We got a whole bunch of new features coming. We got a whole bunch of new content coming, which is what I care about more because although I, I must admit that connected Mac with the ultra wide, yeah, I may start using my Mac in there. Up till now, I haven't really cared about productivity stuff, but if they, as they make it better and easier to use, I may have to get a magic keyboard. Although you think they'd have keyboard breakthrough for your Mac. So when I go to reach for the Mac, actually I probably wouldn't be in an environment if I was doing that. Well, so what does this all mean? I'll tell you what it means to me. It means Apple is still investing hundreds of millions of dollars into Vision Pro. They are not giving up on it. They're going into eight more countries and the more they sell, the more money they'll be able to pour back in. And before too long, we might have a Vision Pro 2 which I'm really looking forward to, especially if they get somebody who knows something about ergonomics so this thing doesn't feel like a face hugger from Alien on my face. It really bothers me. That is my quick recap of Vision OS 2.0 from WWDC, plus some stuff that Wes Davis pointed out, plus some more stuff that I dug out. And if you go to Apple's web pages, you can find like examples of a lot of these things and they have little videos. It's coming. Apple will probably get this to a point where I really love it, like when the next version of the hardware comes out. That's all I got for today. Next week, I'll probably be going back and like reviewing the new iPad Pro that I bought, but with iPad OS 18 in mind, and will that make it more worth the money? I don't think so. Give me another week to play with it and look at it and figure out what's going on. So I'll be back next week. We'll talk about the iPad Pro. That's it for today. Thanks for stopping by. Bye-bye. I'm going to go down and put the Vision Pro on and hurt my face. Thanks for staying to the end. Bye-bye.